Welcome. You have reached review time with Imperial. Let's get into it. Today's review is the movie Searching, starring actor John Cho. He plays as uh, David Kim. Let's get into this movie. You know, uh, seen the previews for this movie, didn't know how to take it. But, I, you know, I was intrigued enough to say, let me see what it's about. Let me give it a chance. If you can get past the first person view of the movie, so it's not like your typical movie. Everything's through first person, through webcam, um, FaceTime. If you get past all that and you take the message from the movie and follow how the movie goes... This is a darn good film, very informative, very current in today's society of what's going on out here. So pretty much, if you've seen the trailer and the previews, you kind of know the concept of the movie. So the movie is through first person. So keep in mind, going through this movie, that could be annoying to some people, but if you engage you stay in tune to the movie, the movie will engage you to find out what's going to happen next. So, pretty much, uh, the movie starts off showing um, a father looking in through his computer, looking up all the baby pictures and videos of his daughter. Then it shows his wife. It's, he got so many videos and pictures. He has dates, first day of school, first day of this, or first day of that. His wife teaching his daughter piano lessons. So all this is marked down. So in the course of the daughter growing up, the mom took ill. I think she, she got lupus or she something she got, and uh, she fought it. And at first she was seceding, and they were all, you know, getting a healthy kid, working out, exercising. But then um, she went through remission. She uh, was fighting it. Then she had a relapse. Now, keep in mind, through all this that's going on, this is like documented to events, to events, to events. And it's going from what the dad is posting in his events to what the daughter's posting in her events. And one of her events was... Mom's coming home today from the hospital. This is after she relapsed. Then the date changed, the date changed, and finally it went to, like, the mom wasn't coming home. So the mom became gravely ill in the hospital, and the mom ended up passing. So that was heartfelt for the dad, heartfelt for the daughter. At this point, the daughter is roughly 14 to 16 years old. I think she was about um, 14, and then... If current time she was 16. So the dad pretty much is a workaholic. He is um, working all the time. Meanwhile, by him working so much, the death of his wife, um, it kind of really lo lost the engagement with his daughter. And during the teenage years, these are key moments for a teenager that needs attention and lots of communication. And even with all that, a teenager still will go south, but you as a parent must still uh, make sure they do their part. You know what I'm saying? So it's gotta be a 50-50, both pieces gotta go together. And um, so he gets at his daughter, he speaks to her, say, hey, pretty much yo, you didn't put the tra you didn't take the trash out, you keep not um taking the trash. So he's, you know, trying to teach her responsibility. And um he tells her that uh she tells him rather that she's going to a uh biology class um study group. And pretty much at that point he like, okay, he's at work, and he said, don't be late. So, in the middle of the night, he's asleep. He gets a call from his daughter, 
Now, the way it's viewed, you don't know if he's off in another state somewhere. Is he home? What's up with the scenario? Or um, his daughter calls him twice. He doesn't answer because he's asleep. So then she FaceTimes him. And, of course, all our people who have Apple know if you put FaceTime, the view of the FaceTime instantly opens up. So it shows the dad is asleep. So after that, he wakes up in the morning and he calls her and he pretty much looked to see that she didn't take out the trash or anything and um, she doesn't answer. So he texts her while he's at work. She doesn't respond. So pretty much at this point, he's kind of alarmed, but still trying to keep it modest and He, f he calls her. She doesn't answer. So now he's getting alarmed. Like, hold up. Since when you don't respond to me, no, no response for the text. So now he's alarmed. He's speaking to his brother. His brother pretty much is like, you know, like calm down. Like, you know what I'm saying? Remember way back in the day I did X, Y, and Z. I was going for like 20, 48 hours. So he like pretty much this ain't like her. So... He now is, okay, I need to, oh, today's Friday. Okay, my daughter, she got piano lessons or a recital or a rehearsal or something like that. And he calls the piano teacher. The piano teacher tells him that the daughter stopped piano classes six months ago. Now, that sets off all red flags. That sets off red flags. Okay, now he's um, disturbed. Uh, he calls the school. The school tells him she didn't show up to school. Now he's really alarmed. So now um, he's looking through like uh, he doesn't really know her friends. He doesn't know really much about his daughter. So this is alarming. So it is at this point viewing this it's imperative that uh, parents get to know your friends, your who your kids is hanging out with. Communication is very key. Uh, kids, children, teenagers, keep an open line of communication with your parents. Man, I know you feel, I've been there before, I know you feel that you've grown, you don't got to tell nobody nothing, but when these situations happen, everybody needs to be in the know. So get back to the movie. That was a, a PSA. So uh, getting back to the movie. So from there, he's pretty much, alarmed he's looking through the computer looking at old phone numbers from people from back in the fifth grade fourth grade and stuff like that so he found one person and that person said spoke to the mom and the mom was pretty much like oh they went on a camping trip she didn't tell you and he like oh it must have you know um i forgot maybe she you know so he was like she was like well i have them call you when they get out of the mountains so pretty much at that point He's looking up. There, the son calls him, and he say, "Mr. Kim, she never showed up, and her name is Margot. I keep saying his daughter. His daughter name is Margot, and he said Margot never showed up, and he now that sets off all flags. She didn't show up school, didn't show up to the camping trip, and she uh, stopped tall her um, recital classes for the last six months." So now he, at this point, he's calling the authorities and uh, the authorities show up, take his information. A detective gets on the case and in comes uh, the t detective is the actress, Deborah Messing. So in the movie, her name is Detective Ross. So she comes in. She asks him a bunch of questions. What do we know about his daughter? She needs everything, all the information. He doesn't know much, so he goes to social media. All her social media posts is private, so he doesn't. So he pits uh, forget password, and so it kept giving him the trace. We send a code to the email, that type. So somehow he was able to send a code to one of the emails that he got access to, and with that email he was able to unlock and change the password to all her social media accounts and he got to see like um she's following a lot of people and 
you know, his uh, daughter is kind of private. So now what he's doing, the computer, he, uh, you could sign underneath different, like, like, you know, when you sign the computer, you change the user. So he goes underneath her name and see the things she was looking into and all these different things. And so now he's calling more people. So he calling all the friends that she was following or friends list saying he got to find out that his daughter, she did show up to the biology study group, but she left about nine o'clock. So, um, that's alarming. And he got to see that his daughter was really a um, introvert and she stayed to herself and didn't have as many friends as he thought she might have had. People knew her, but they really didn't know her. They didn't really hang out with her like that. She kind of stood to herself. So maybe she was really going through a depression from her mother passing, but... You know what I'm saying? So uh, now uh, one of the girls that he spoke to said she was on the site Tumblr a lot. So when he went to Tumblr, he got to see that she was in. She had photos and of different stuff. You know what I'm saying? He got to see some things like that. So in the course of he's going back and forth with the detective telling her stuff. She telling him stuff. Um, so he looks into her laptop. And once he loads her laptop up, because she left her laptop there, he seen that she was connected to, like, um, uh, some weird site, like, Cast Now or something like that. And so, uh, this is pretty much, like, uh, uh, to me, um, like a bootleg version of Instagram. And so, um... They had uh, where people go on there and they pretty much talk live and um, people chime in. So these sites is very creepy because it's a it's a bootleg version of Instagram and a site that nobody don't really pay attention to. Little kids, teenagers is going on these sites. You don't know who is on those sites looking. It's predators out there. Catfishing. Making believe that there's something that they're not. And you're thinking this one person is really somebody else. They befriending these kids. They learning these kids. They learning all their social media. They friending them on this social media. that mostly. So through social media, you can learn a person's habits and stuff like that. And then find out what type of person they are and then they become a predator and then they catch them at a vulnerable point and then they strike. So Pacey, when he's going in there, he's seeing what this site is and then he clicks where his daughter, she got saved posts and it shows who her post is. Like her very first post, some dude came in, he was creepy. So she blocked him. But this other dude came in and said, um, like who was her favorite Pokemon? Or whatever. But the way he said it, he or she, whatever it was, um, it had a name, Fish and Chips, and it said like they already knew her. And then she kind of said my name. And it's like, well, you never go back to my question. And she kind of said who her favorite Pokemon person. And they said who their favorite Pokemon. Fast forward in the videos. Um, fast forward in the videos. That same person now had a profile picture and they got to talking for the whole six months and they got to talking about, you know, back and forth. And that person was saying they had to work all these long hours. They was in school saying they was 20 years old and then they got kicked out of school because they couldn't fill the hospital bills because their um, parent had cancer. So ding, 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 ding. Her mother died from lupus. This person's parent has cancer, so that's the tie right there. So she can relate to that person. So, you know, um, from there, the father passed the information on to the detective. The detective called back and said, it checks out. That person is a good person. They, their manager checked and said, uh, pretty much that that person was um, uh, 
checked out they was at work during this time. So the detective sent him a video basically showing a video where his daughter was last seen. His daughter was last seen at the gas station. Then it showed, um, from there it showed the daughter, uh, where the camera last seen the daughter turn off at or whatever. So it was like as if she was leaving town. And from there, it he he uh pinned where the daughter's location was into his records. And so he's um alarmed, he's going through different stuff. It was a kid on there where the kid was making like he Mess, mess with his daughter but he really didn't so that was bogus but um the father was about to go to sleep one night and um uh he was looking through the different videos and one of the videos she was at a, a lake so it triggered him like hold on I see that lake then it also he remembered in one of her Tumblr pictures, she had a picture of the same lake. He put two and two together, and he found out where that lake was. He put it in the maps, and it was probably five minutes from the last time she was seen. So he put two and two together, basically saying, yo, um, this is where she went. She had to go there. So he's storming off like I'm going or whatever. So... Another PSA. Men, women, children, teenagers, no matter how peaceful a place could look, it is not cool under any circumstances, day or night, to be going to no off places where nobody can see you. If something happened, nobody can get to you. And especially... Not at night. No matter if you're trying to get away from the society or world, find a better place than that because that's not going to get it. It's all type of walks of life of creepy people walking around there just not right in the head and anything can happen to you. So back to the movie. The cop, I mean, the, the father um, calls the detective, say you said she, because the detective had the theory that maybe she just ran away. And so he found her. And one of the videos is she showed that she had a uh, one of the Pokemon. She had it on her keychain or whatever. And um, he found her keychain on the ground. And he told the detective, like, yo, you told me she just ran away. She told me she just ran away. Meanwhile, the detective is asleep. And she's trying to rush. Like, what, what's... Then all of a sudden you can hear the cops. So he had already called the cops and everything. So he's at the site. And they find her car. That was dumped in a, um, in a lake. So they pull the lake out. Um, I skipped a part. She had twenty five hundred. That she she was taking all her payments that he was leaving for her, for to pay for her recital over the last six months. She was taking those payments, depositing into her bank account and. She was, um, she withdrew 2500 and she went to pay for something. But the way it, he viewed it, that she took the money to go give to somebody else. The detective came back and said that money said basically she gave the money to herself. Now, the dad is looking like, well, why did she take the money out and give it to herself? What's she doing, money laundering? She was like, well, maybe, yeah. He like, to herself? Like, like damn, I really didn't know. Now he's... Uh, bewildered because he like, I really don't know my daughter. Like he's like, man. So um, they find the car. Daughter's not in there. They see the twenty five hundred is in the car. Um, but there's some things that you're gonna look at. I'm watching this from the movie. I'm like, why they didn't ping the cell phone? Where was the cell phone? So you could trace where was the last time that cell phone was last alerted. That's another thing to keep your locations of your personal phone on just for those type. Because at least the last time that it's going to show the last time your 
phone was active or whatever, and it's going to give a location. So it never showed why they didn't look at that. They looked at everything else, why they didn't look at that. So that was weird. And so um, they pulled a thing. And at this point, it's wide open. Everybody's coming. They're trying to search for the girl. The um, detective comes on camera. Basically, we look in. We search these areas. And, and mid-searching, like, it probably was about two days since they started a big storm came and so it's you know they that delayed the search so meanwhile the dad is still looking through everything um the, the detective is saying she's distraught over everything and then the detective is i mean the father is looking over all the pictures of all the car and inside of the car he sees a jacket that says Finn. Finn, the person he know that like Finn's is his brother. So now in his mind, like, my, did my brother do something to my daughter? So he, he goes over to the brother's house. He sets up cameras and he's basically going to get the brother to confess on camera that he did something to his daughter. So he's talking to the brother, basically asking the brother, like, when the last time you see her, the brother is pretty much... uh standoffish and trying to change the subject and he like nah when was the last time you seen her so now he's reading texts that her that text exchanges from the brother and his daughter and the way it sounds creepy when he's saying it he's basically saying like this is my first time oh it was real good last night this these cruel creepy cryptid you like what the fuck would you be saying what would you be saying this to your niece for so nevertheless um come to find out he, he collared his brother up Choked him out. He almost tried to kill him, but he didn't. But he stopped. And the brother was saying, weed, man, weed. We were smoking weed. And he like, weed? Meanwhile, the cop is trying to call him, but he can't see that because he's arguing with the brother. He like, weed? So he looking at him like, like, come on, man. You were smoking weed with my daughter? You know what I'm saying? So he pretty much saying, if you would have paid attention to her, you would have known she didn't want to do piano lessons no more because that every time she took to the piano, it reminded her of her mother or whatever. So, you know, basically the uncle, uncle was smoking weed with her. And the, I think the night of that she disappeared, she went and got some weed for the uncle. So when he gets the phone call, it's the detective telling him they found the killer. And... The killer left a message saying, basically, I'm sorry what I did to you. And um, I'm sorry what I did to you. You know, it was wrong of me to do that. And then they said he took his life after that. So the detective pretty much got online and said, we're going to take this at his word that this would, you know, that he, he killed her or whatever. So the, the dad was crying. He was distraught. And... I got to rewind a little bit. I skipped something that was key. Uh, when he first got the detective, he looked her name up from the gate, see what her past was, see what she was into. And she was in um, a reform. She helped the community. And he was happy that she got on the case and she helped him and whatever. And she was distraught and she pretty much told him, like, I wish we could have did more. And if you had any other questions, let me know. So... The dad is pretty much, he's upset. So, um, before the killer got found, the dad got some type of notice, like, of a memorial of basically, like, you could use this service and you could upload pictures to the memorial and it'll help you, um, you know, send pictures, pictures so the pictures could go through while the funeral was going on. And so, in the process of him, he had responded, she's not dead. So, at this point, he's like, you know, my daughter's dead at this moment, you know. And, you know, he's upset. So, he start uploading pictures. And one of the films, it was like a touching moment. He, he had a, a video of him and his daughter waking him up. And she was little and she said, best dad ever. So he took that picture and threw it away because he felt like he failed as a parent. So he uploaded all these pictures. But in the process of upload, once he up, 
push upload after you got the pictures on there. The face of the person on there was the same face of the person that was on um his daughter's that UCAS site she was on with the same profile pic. So when he took that profile pic, put it in the search engine in Google, it popped up all these pictures or whatever. So then, which triggered him to call the person who the detective called and said they had an alibi. And he called that person like, hey, man, you know, I see your pictures all online, you know. The detective said, and that person, like, who are you talking about? He said, yeah, the detective called you, such and such, such and such. He said, um, the, the person said, I ain't speak to no detective. Uh-oh, flag. So now, he he's thinking, like, what? So this is the day of his daughter's funeral. Of course, they don't got no body, but it's her funeral, her picture's up there. And you can watch the funeral live. So he can see that the detective is already at the funeral. So he goes back and looks at one of the pictures that he found that the detective was part of. She part of like a drug reform um, community or something program she was part of. The dude that they said was the killer that made the video is in that same picture. Ultimate flag. So it, sh it shows him call the um the head of the police department and so what happens from there it shows the um him coming people looking at him and he's looking distraught and he's coming through and it shows the cops come in and at this point she know oh snap they know so they handcuff her pull her in the feed goes off so the next feed is them interrogating her and so She's she's now get ready to confess. So my bad. I know this is a long one, but it's is this this is this is worth it. Uh so rewind. Earlier in, in the movie, it was a conversation she had with the her the father, the re detective had with the father. She said um to him, like when she was explaining to him that as a parent, you you know, you, you times that things happen that you really don't know your kid. She said a woman came to her house and said that her son stole $25. And she argued up and down, said her son didn't steal $25. Come to find out the son was going around the neighborhood, asking people, knowing that his mom was part of the uh, police officer, that they were running a donation fund for the police program. And asking all the neighbor people in the neighborhood to donate, and so when that took place, he uh she you know found out her son did that, so he and then she ended it right there. And he said, "Well, well, what did you do afterwards?" And she was like, "Well, I covered up for him. Said I established the um the the program." And uh, asked, told her thank you for the money, and so she and she said if you ever tell anybody I deny it or whatever. So they laughed that off, joke, boom. That's going to fast forward to now. I had to throw that piece in there. So when they interrogating her, she said six months ago, her son had um, listed into that cast and he really liked your daughter and he befriended her and posed as somebody else and he didn't think he thought it was just going was innocent till your daughter found who that was and sent him twenty five hundred dollars to help with the hospital bills and she was a good person so he was a he was a introvert himself and a, a weird kid and um so the video shows where it shows the daughter leaving from the gas station 
it shows another car following behind her. But at the time, you when you first see it early in the movie, you wouldn't even pay attention to it. You just would just think you're following her car. But another car followed her right behind or whatever. And then when she goes into the interstate, the feed cuts off when she turns onto the interstate. But the longer feed shows another car following right behind her. So this weird kid, because he's weird, he thinking the best time is to track her down wherever she's at and apologize. So when she goes to this lake, he, she's in the car smoking the weed that she got from the uncle. And she, he jumps in the car. And he's coming to apologize, but she like, you weirdo. Like, you know, you don't, what are you doing? Or whatever. So she, she panics. She hits him or whatever. And, um, that describes, cause when they said they found a car, they found some type of blood that describes the blood or whatever in the car. Cause she hit him. And so she runs out of the car and she's running. Now she's running in a lake area at dark, that's when she's calling her dad at the time, calling him twice, and um, she should have left a brief, quick message or whatever. Nevertheless, she didn't. She tried to FaceTime. Dad was asleep, so that's when she wish him call. And so what this weird kid does, he's chasing her, and in the process of chasing her, he pushed her off the mountain or whatever, and he calls his mom. So keep in mind, she's a police officer, so... He doesn't call the cops first. He calls his mom. She tells him, calm down or whatever. So she comes out and basically covers everything up. And she figured it was about 50 feet down. The girl had to be dead or whatever. And so she figured um, uh, she she would push the car in, in a lake. <coughs> Excuse me. She pushed the car in a lake. So... They figure, well, she had to be, they like, so you didn't check and see if she was alive or anything? Well, she said, well, it's been five days. She would have died. So when the father heard that, the father said, no, it hasn't been five days since she's been without water. It's only been two. So the body could live off of um, without water for five days and it's only been two because if you think back way back when i told you it's when they was searching for a storm heavy it restarted the cycle of the body receiving water so then at this point she told the authorities when she was on tv and she said we covered this area she made sure she checked off an area where she knew that 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 girl would have fell at and so come to find out they go to that site the father is frantic they find the daughter she's still alive so a happy ending to a terrible story shows a father's will a parent's will to never give up to the very last end to keep going uh parents got to be mindful of children that's weird if you know your child's off, be honest. Try to go out and get them help. You know what I'm saying? Talk to somebody. You see the signs. The signs be there. As parents, you ignore them. Say, you know, they're just going through a phase or whatever. And in some cases, those people make it out. But not in a lot of cases, these type situations, this, this story felt so real like it happened in real life or whatever. So it's a good movie, good message. If you could get past... The first person and all that, because it's through webcam and through FaceTime and all. If you can get past that, it's a good message, good story, man. Um, I gave you a long, long review on this one because I thought it was meaningful to get this one out like it did. So uh, if I had to rate this, um, to me personally, because of the message, because of the meaning... I'm going to get it a four out of four because of the message and the meaning behind it. Other people might give it a lesser because it's in first person, but I'm going to bypass that and give it a four out of four because the message and the meaning, 
the society that we in, catfishing, paying attention, communicating, is very key through life with everybody. So this is a film I would say parents need to watch with their with their children, with their teenagers, and both can learn from it, from both sides. Subscribe and like, share the video. Tune in to the next time.